It's Thursday night, and we're going to have a good time tonight. We're going to dive into some rock and roll preaching with a band out of Las Vegas, Nevada, known as The Word 66. We will have them up with us in just a moment. And we have with us, let me bring him on screen. We have Steve from the Word 66 with us. Steve, welcome to the live stream. Thanks for inviting me, Glenn. I have been looking forward to this all day long. I have too. I'm really excited about having you on tonight to talk about your music and how God is using you. Uh, we're going to get into your latest release in just a few moments. But hey, for those that are new to this uh, show that are watching us on YouTube for the very first time, go ahead and like and subscribe. Got to do that. And to let you know, too, that the comment lines are open. So if you have any questions for Steve about the band and about what they're up to out there in the great state of Nevada, <laughs> he will be able, be able to answer those questions for you. So I will try. Hey, we'll do the best we can. How about that? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you know, the mission of the word 66, your band is greater than just expressing yourself through music, which actually is, you know, if that was it, that's pretty noble and very courageous for anybody to do that. But what you're up to and what you're wanting to do is much greater than that. What is what is the mission of the word 66? Pretty simple. It's just to spread a positive message, to spread the word of God and the word of Christ Jesus. We want people to know that there's a higher power out there that's looking after you, that the Holy Spirit wants to be with you. That's all you have to do is ask for the Holy Spirit to be with you. Um, we always have positive lyrics. I always like to stick some um, scripture in my lyrics as well, sneak it in there um, quite often. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, the, the world, as you know, is uh, is kind of crazy. Yeah. And and the world could use some positivity, man. So um, I, everything, I mean, even, you know, from uh, from what happened with COVID from a couple of years ago, I know I'm a business owner myself and uh, believe it or not, this is not what I do for a total living. I, I, I am not getting rich from from spreading the word with music, by the way. Um, so I own a business and I mean, it's still taking me a while to get back to where it used to be. So I'm still kind of behind and, you know, I just got my electric bill, you know, I, I don't know about you, but it's twice the sum of the highest bill I've ever had before. Oh so again, so we all need a, a positive message out there and, and to look forward to, the good things that God has for us. We, we really do. Uh, so you mean to tell me that you're not living the Nickelback lifestyle with a bathroom as big as a baseball field? Uh. <laughs> I am not. No. In fact, I don't even have a bathroom. I have to share it with my neighbor. Uh, we have an outhouse, you know, that's a couple of houses down. And, you know, we, we that's how I got to meet my neighbors because uh, uh, we were in our bathrobes. Ah. And uh, we were going to the bathroom to brush our teeth, actually. And that's how uh, that's, that's how you met. That's a whole nother story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were talking before we got online that everybody thinks that, you know, hey, uh, this guy's a rock star and got this big house and a Learjet. And all I do all day is interview people and listen to music. That, that'd be cool if that's oh, what that'd it be was. Great. Yeah. Man, that'd be great. It would be. But we live all days. Those. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, that used to be the way it was in the 80s uh, for musicians, but long gone are those days. Yes. You know, yes indeed. I, I've even seen some major bands on stage, and when the show's over, they're the ones moving their stuff off stage and packing up the bus. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a whole different, whole different ball game. How was it, Steve, that you discovered that God was calling you to glorify him through rock music? I'm going to share something personal with everybody out there. Okay, sure. So just before I put this band together, I actually got divorced. And 
that's when God called me. I think he basically said, um, Steve, you're going to have a lot of free time. <laughs> so um, how about you do it for me? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I got this inspiration to uh, to write a whole bunch of new music and um, really writing Christian rock before was not something I really did. So uh, and I was out of religion for quite a long time prior to this. And uh, again, I believe I got a calling to do this and uh, I started writing the music. And uh, shortly after we got into the studio and it just took off. And so that basically uh, verified the fact that this is my calling and this is my purpose in life. You had that confirmation once you got into the studio, you knew. I knew, absolutely. It just, it just gelled. How, how was it that you got the other members of the band to join you in this mission? Actually, I put an ad in uh, on Craigslist. Are you familiar with that? I am, and you're not the first artist that's told me that. <laughs> <laughs> now, where you have a lot of not so great musicians uh, contacting you, which was the large, large majority. Uh, actually, this guy, Dave Murray, who was the original drummer, who's no longer in the band, but he had contacted me and we had gotten together and we just jammed and it just seemed to flow really well. So um, so getting him was pretty simple. And then uh, it took a little while to find Brian um, Torres, who's the vocalist and the bassist. And uh, and that's how the band got together. So Craigslist. Yeah, you are not the first person that's told me that. Uh, I've seen other miracles come forth from putting ads <laughs> on Craigslist. So I was going to say, was it Craigslist? <laughs> A miracle indeed. Yes. <laughs> my, my second choice was, uh, you know, um, you know, a farmer's only or something like that. Some other ridiculous website. Or walk around with a sign on the, yeah. on, the, on Vegas <laughs> Boulevard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> why is it important to you to express yourself and to glorify god through rock music through that particular genre and why do you think it's important for other believers who are musicians like yourself that are rock musicians to glorify jesus through this genre i've always been a rocker so that's really what i needed to do um, it was a pretty easy transformation for me to start writing the Christian rock. Um, it's really funny, too, because there's a lot of people out there that I've talked to, um, especially DJs um, and other bloggers um, and people uh, uh, that write the magazines and all that really don't even know that this genre exists. Okay. So it's always important to pass on a good message. I mean, there's a lot of songs that you could probably think of that don't have the most positive messages in oh, the yes. music, especially rock and roll and especially heavy rock and roll as well. Okay. You know, your metal stuff. So um, putting a, a good message out there is always important because I think that people, when they hear the music, if they're not really into religion, maybe it will inspire them to learn a little bit more about it. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think you're right. And thank you for the uh, the heart that uh, we just got from one of our followers to uh, tonight's uh, interview. Go ahead. And if you've got comments, you can go ahead and comment, ask Steve questions about the word 66 and his mission to spread the gospel. Rock and roll preaching is what you call it, isn't it? Yes. Yes. How'd you come up with that? You know, I kind of believe that's what I do. Mm hmm is I kind of preach through the music. Yeah. I let the music do the talking, Glenn. I, I am not one of those people that when you go out, if you meet me, I'm not someone that's gonna start talking about God and Christ and I'm not gonna start preaching to you and tell you how you're gonna go to hell and how you need to be saved and this is what you need to do. I believe that's something you gotta discover on your own. It's a personal preference for you. And I believe that this music preaching the word is part of baby steps for that person, perhaps. Mm, Someone that really okay. doesn't know anything about religion. I'm hoping that they'll hear the music. And again, as far as baby steps go, maybe add some of the music to the current playlist. Yeah. Yeah. As a baby step. And then maybe they'll be hearing the music and then they'll 
add some more music to it. And then eventually they'll have a whole bunch of it on their playlist that they'll hear and they'll go, Hey, you know, this is really cool. And you know, that message was really cool. And, and then again, and maybe they'll want to know a little bit more about it. You've got a very good point. There's two friends that I've, I've got more than two friends, but there's two friends in particular that I've had. I only have two. So, <laughs> two. <laughs> uh, and, and both were experiences with them riding in, the, in their vehicles on trips uh, the first one, he had his MP3 player. It was his iPod at the time. That kind of goes back a little bit. Um, and he had a Christian artist that came up on there, and he was not a believer, uh, not religious at all. And I was like, dude, you've got this artist on your playlist. I was like, that's awesome. He's like, oh, yeah, I love you know uh, th this particular artist. I was like, oh, that that's awesome. And then another friend of mine, uh, we had to take a long trip, and like – every third song on his playlist was a skillet song and i was like dude you like skillet he's like yes he's like it, it calms me down i was like okay that's cool and he's, he's not a believer either so it's just that introduction to it and you know even for me in my walk with with christ um it was the opposite music that kind of drove me to to the cross um when i was growing up ozzy osbourne um Blue Oyster Cult, which we're going to talk about in a few moments. Um, <laughs> they all kind of freaked me out to a degree, and I was somewhat um, religious at the time. But I was like, there's got to be more to this. And how do I, how do I, you know, escape this thing of hell that they're all talking about? So, <laughs> so Jeffrey's got a question for you. Um, he says, I might have missed uh, this coming in a few minutes late, but are there any influences, role models that are a motivation, either music or pastors, teachers, Christian authors that you have? I am not a huge reader, to be honest with you. So my knowledge comes from going to church and Bible study and reading the Bible. So I got to be honest with you. I, I, I don't like reading. Um unless I have to. So again, I know that you need to get into the word at times. So um, I will do that, but um, I'd rather do an audio book <laughs> to be honest with you, because uh, um, reading kind of puts me to sleep. And um, let's be honest here. Some of the stuff in the Bible is kind of hard to understand. Yes, so is, like, yeah. I don't know about you, but some of the stuff, I mean, I'll read some things and then I'll go like, what was that? What, what, what did I just read? And I'll have to read that again and again and go, hmm. So, um, so yeah, uh, Jeffrey, I, I, I'm not really a, a big reader, but I, again, I, I do do the audio books. How about music influences? Uh, what other bands have influenced you in your, your, your art? Non-Christian bands, mostly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Probably my biggest influence is probably Sabbath. Like Sabbath? Okay. I love Sabbath. I have always been a big fan. And Tony Iommi, as far as I'm concerned, is like the father of the power chord. Yes, he is. You know, he's the man that really invented it as far as I'm concerned. So um, I know that music used to really freak me out, um, maybe in a bad way, <laughs> but... <laughs> But I've taken so much from Sabbath and such a great band and such great music. And, um, you know, those guys are always wearing crosses and stuff as well. So I think there's a lot of people that really misconstrue where they're coming from. Yes. Yes. Um, an another band is Priest. I've always been a, a huge Priest fan. Yep. And if you want to get into the, the Christian part of the music, I mean, uh, bands that are like Thousand Foot Crutch, uh, I love. I love Disciple. Uh, Petra, Bloodgood. I mean, oh, some yes. of the, the innovators yes. of of um, Christian hard rock. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's interesting that you bring up some of those bands. I want to go back to what you just said about the Black Sabbath being misconstrued. Uh, there was an article that just came out about two months ago where Iomi was talking about what Iron Man was really about, the song Iron Man. And he's like, that song was about Jesus. He came out right out and said it. And he talked about how he used to, when he was growing up, uh, enjoyed getting uh, dressed up in his Sunday best and going to church and enjoyed going to church. Uh, and if you, um, one of their albums, uh, their song Ever After, if I preached the lyrics to Ever After in a church, I would be getting high fives all over the place um, because it's very biblically sound. 
Uh, now, if I told everybody in the church what I was preaching from, I'd be thrown out and thrown over a cliff in, in, a, lot, in a lot of instances. But they were very misconstrued, um, misconstrued. And even Ozzy Osbourne's earlier music, uh, in a lot of ways, was misconstrued. Uh, you know, listen to Crazy Train. Uh, the first time I heard it, I was like, it, as a kid, I was like, this is what the fuss is about. I was like, what, what, what is this? I was like, this is not, you know, what I thought it would be. Uh, what I thought it would be is what we're seeing a lot of now in the in the harder and the heavier realm uh, where the restraints have been taken off. But I was like, this is this is not what I thought it would be. So a lot of it's been misconstrued and a lot of it goes into those myths about rock and roll and, um, you know, Christianity and rock and roll. And I want to ask you about that in particular. What are some myths about Christian rock or just rock that in general that you've had to overcome in getting this project up off the ground? I think a lot of people, uh, again, I was saying about uh, some of the DJs and other people I, I uh, have been in contact with. So I pretty much have done pretty much all of the PR for this band. Um, and I, again, it started when uh, uh, during COVID time, because uh, that's about the time that we put out our first EP. Um, and you had you couldn't go anywhere you know you weren't supposed to leave your home and stuff so i mean so i had like 12 hours a day that i was just promoting this music and sending it out to people and i think there's a lot of people that also will misconstrue exactly what the term christian rock actually means there's a lot of people out there i still get people that say they didn't know we we're a christian band first of all you know because we rock like all your other bands out there. The only difference yeah. is we, we have a positive message. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know that. And they think that we're like the innovators, um, especially in the indie world. Okay. So we get a lot of radio play on the indie stations, for instance, and we've charted really well and, and lots of number ones in, in different countries and stuff. And a lot of those people too think that we're probably like the first ones to ever do this. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're like, wow, you know, I love what you guys are doing. And this, this yeah. is so cool. And it's like, you know, I really appreciate that, man. I said, but there's really a ton of other bands out there that are kind of doing the same thing that we do. You know, we have our own style per se, but but everybody else is is doing the same kind of thing. So that's one major thing is that a lot of people don't really know that this music exists. And then you have a lot of other people, too, that think maybe it's not good for them to listen to Christian music. Oh, do tell. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, people, they don't know what to expect. So, yeah. uh, again, you know, if they put on like some of our music, they, a lot of people have been like, wow, man, this is this. I can't believe this. This is so great. I, I think that people think that Christian music is maybe, I don't know, maybe it's like um like a pipe organ kind of music, you know what I mean? Like right. stuff that, yeah. that you would hear in church or that the Phantom of the Opera would be playing or something, <laughs> you know, that, that kind of music and with a big choir behind and, you know, no no guitars, no solos, no, no double kick drums or anything of that kind of nature. So that's been uh, something that we've had to uh, overcome as well. And yeah. I believe there's a lot of people, too, that when we do send them the music and if they find out that we're Christian, they probably won't even listen to it. Yeah, that, that's a shame because what you're doing is your music is top notch quality. And we're, we're going to play the, uh, the chosen one in just a few, mo few moments. Thank you. I find it very refreshing. I find it very professionally done. Now, I have to admit, and I've said this several times on, on the live stream, you know, when I was saved back in the 90s, I was listening to all sorts of secular music uh, and I was really into it. I wanted to be a DJ when I was growing up at one point in time. Go figure. Um, but my friends are like, oh, you need to go to the Christian bookstore. You need to go to Zondervan's and get, you know, some Christian tapes and things like that. And I didn't know what I was getting. Now, I did get some Keith Green from the 1970s, who was one of the innovators in Christian rock back in the 70s. Uh, one of the... Uh, grandfathers of, of the genre and i enjoyed that but the rest of it i was like this stuff is cheesy i was like this is just a cheap knockoff of 
you know, and I would see all the time, well, if you like this band, if you're a Christian, you need to listen to this one. It's like, no, if I want to listen to Metallica, I should be listening to Metallica. I don't need somebody that sounds like, you know, the, the k singers of <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, the k records. That's what it sounded like. But gotcha. we're at a point now, a new evolution in, in Christian music. And I think it's because God is reviving his people and his church and the arts and entertainment where there is this um, hidden treasure trove of Christian artists like yourselves that are just top notch putting out quality music and not compromising at all where you stand and what you believe. And how have you been able to pull that off? I mean, you're respected in both, both Christian, uh, the Christian music circles, as well as the hard rock and metal circles and being played on indie stations. How have you been able to do that without compromising your beliefs and who you are? Yeah, I'm definitely not going to compromise. I mean, there are a lot of bands out there, uh, Christian bands, that kind of hide the fact that they're Christian. And you don't even really know that they're Christian bands. Yeah. Um, that's not my mission. You know, I believe that God had a reason for me to do this project, for this to be my purpose in life. And the fact that we are able to be what you would call a crossover band. So mm -hmm. um, like you mentioned, we have been blessed to not only um, be liked in the Christian world, but also the secular and the hard rock world as well. And even some of the hardcore places like to stick our music in as well, because um, metal has different kinds of subgenres. To oh, it does, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't hide the fact that we're Christian in our music, and I don't want to hide that fact. Um, and again, there's there's a lot of people that probably wouldn't be crazy about it. Um, I've had a lot of people, like I said, mention that they didn't know we were Christian until they read their, our bio. Okay. So when they read the bio, they're like, oh, wow, this is a Christian band, you know? So um, going back to kind of the other question too that you mentioned, music is so important in people's lives, you know? And I remember that's one of the big things that brought me to Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a friend that actually was listening to a bunch of Christian rock and that's how they approached me, which was perfect for me because music is my life. And basically they said, Hey man, I want you to check out these bands. And you know, these are Christian rock bands and a lot of people don't even know what Christian rock is, like I said, and they, they have no clue whatsoever. So, and I, I was one of those people, I got to admit. And then when I got turned on to some of the Christian music, I was like, wow, this is really cool. So I, I really believe that if people would just give it a, a, a chance, yeah. have an open mind and listen to the music, I believe it wouldn't really matter whether you're Christian or non-Christian. And I, I think you either love the message or just dig the music. Yeah. 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 You know, one of the things that I've seen, well, one of the first bands that I've worked with, oh, and thank you for the thumbs up too. We've got uh, some hearts and thumbs up this evening. So thank Ooh, you awesome. very much. Yes. Thank and you, go people. ahead and join the conversation if you want. I'm making to. sense. That, that's yes, good. you are right. making sense. I think you're, you're resonating with some I people. I confuse myself <laughs> usually. <laughs> My dogs don't even understand me. They give me funny looks. <laughs> One of the first bands I started working with through this ministry is a band out of uh, Orlando, Florida, Armor of God. I met them at a secular concert in Tampa, Florida. They opened up for uh, Hammerfall in Delane uh, from Europe. And they were, you know, Armor of God. It's like, oh, well, you know who they are. You know, you, you know who they are. And their lyrics do not compromise. And they were right on the stage. They opened for these two bands. And then another friend of mine, um, Dave Harvey from a band, uh, Millennial Rain, just a few months ago, they opened for Visions of Atlantis out in Texas, another band from Europe that's a big name band. And he doesn't compromise either. So I think God's opening these doors for musicians like you who don't compromise. You know, it, it's when you sit on that, on that fence, it's like, well, I'm really kind of ashamed of the gospel, but I want to rock and everything like that. God's not going to bless that. You know, that's lukewarm. He spits that out of his mouth. And I just want to encourage you to stay true to who you are. And God's going to continue to open those doors for you because he loves, if you confess him before, you know, 
before men. He will confess you before the Father, and He will bless you. And I think that's Amen. what you're what you're seeing. So let's get into the music. Uh, we got a bunch of viewers right now that uh, need to hear the word sixty six, the chosen one. What is this song about? It's about Christ. I love and it. Of course. And um, it's also about the fact that it's never too late to change. So basically, uh, the video itself, um, I'm in the video, so I, I kind of play uh, a savior. So I'm just driving around in my car and I'm kind of picking up the sinners who need to be saved. And it's funny because I think that people definitely need to read the description about the video before they actually see the video because otherwise like i said they'll see this guy he's driving around he's picking people up it's like what is he doing so um like i said i'm playing a savior um picking up these people and at the end of the video it basically just states that everybody can be saved these people including myself have been saved and at the end we all disappear so basically that says we've all been forgiven and we're on our way to the kingdom of heaven oh that is awesome and when we get done i actually found a scripture verse that ties in with this video so we'll right. talk about that afterwards cool. this is the word 66 with the chosen one watch listen and be amazed
bro, that is fresh. <laughs> that is fresh. Thanks, and man. Again, we have a special seal of approval here at Raven's Heart. I have a studio dog. Her name is Amy. She's a pit terrier. She's got her headphones on, and you get Amy's paw of approval. All right. <laughs> I love dogs. Be... Uh, do you? Awesome. <laughs> I, I don't know if you heard in the background. So while the, the video was going, um, I don't know if anybody could see me in the corner, but I had to get up because I have uh, three dogs, and a couple of them went outside, and they were just barking like crazy outside. I was like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> I had to shuffle them back in because you don't want to hear that. <laughs> And uh, Doyle uh, commented, uh, thank you for your comment, Doyle. He says, sweet lead Scott on that. Um, Doyle is an amazing guy. He's always commenting on our stuff on Facebook. Doyle, I love you, man. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Yes. And Doyle, thank you for joining us on Raven's Heart tonight. As we take a look at this awesome band, the word 66 out of Las Vegas, Nevada. I love the state of Nevada. Been there once. Totally enjoyed my stay there. It's a place I'd like to go back and visit again sometime. Okay. Just Even though sure it's, uh, what, you're three hours behind us on the East Yeah, Coast. three hours. Yeah. yeah. Just make sure yep. that you have you you have a certain amount of money to lose. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, yeah, true. don't spend all the money that you have here for, for getting back home or, or your gas money or whatever the case may be or your food money. Um, <laughs> it's important. Yeah, as soon as I got off the plane, um, <laughs> there were slot machines right there at the airport. Yes, ready? yes, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yep, that's a big thing out there. Yeah, and uh, a couple other things about this song. As I was watching the video, I was like, you know, where in scripture is, can I see something like this? Because just seeing you pick up everybody in the car and then following you, I was like, there's got to be something in the word to this. I was like, God, what is it? And the Lord took me, and I was looking at this actually about a month ago. It's 1 Corinthians 11, 1, where Paul wrote, Be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. Be ye imitators of me as I am of Christ. And you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Setting the example. And that's what you're doing through, through the music. You're setting the example. Uh, you're putting the word out there, and you are preaching through rock and roll. Now, this is the $64,000 question for the evening. Okay. The bass player on this track was Danny Miranda. Yes. Who's played with Queen as well as Blue Oyster Cult. How in the world did this happen for you? Um, Danny's from uh, Long Island like myself from New York, Long Island. And uh, so we've run a lot in the same circles. We've recorded in the same studios as well. We know a lot of the same people. And it just so happens that my producer, uh, Vinny Castaldo, is a really good friend of his. Okay. So he was saying to me that he goes, you know something? He goes, we should get Danny to do the bass lines on this because he's got such an amazing feel and he's just – a fantastic bassist. And I was like, yeah, that'd be really cool. So he sent them the music and Danny loved it. So he was like, yeah, I'll do this. So he laid down the bass tracks and they're amazing. He's a, uh, he's a great guy. And it was such a, an honor and a privilege to have him play on this record. Absolutely. That was the $64,000 question. Now let me shoot you with the $50,000 question. Has Danny ever been okay. able to explain to you what a shooting shark is? That is one of my favorite Blue Oyster Cult songs. What has he been able to explain that? What What is a shooting shark? From what I understand, it that song has to do with addiction. Okay. And so um, in that song, I believe it's about a guy who doesn't learn his lesson. Okay. You know, so it, it's all about love. So he falls in love with this girl and he goes out with her and then they break up and then he goes back with her again and they break up and then he goes back with her again and they break up. So it's like this vicious cycle that he's in. And um, uh, some of us might be able to actually relate to that yeah. song as no well. Kidding. Very, very well done song. It captivated me back in the 80s. Like uh, that was 1983 when that one came out. And I was like, you know, when I think of shooting shark, the first thing that comes to my mind is that great uh, nature documentary, Sharknado. 
<laughs> I'm only kidding. The sci-fi film where they have this, the tornadoes of the sharks that, that are flying around and everything. Oh, like you know, I've, yeah. I've, I've never actually watched one of those. There's a few of those, isn't there? There, There is. If you have time to kill, and that's the only reason why you should watch it, <laughs> it's got no value whatsoever except for, I can't believe they did that. And you get these great cameo appearances in it. Uh, Corey, Corey Taylor from Slipknot uh, guest appeared in, in one oh, really? of them. Oh, yeah, wow. he did. I was like, that's Corey Taylor in, in, uh, in Sharknado. Wow, cool. Yeah, it is just uh, mindless entertainment is what it is. That's like a C movie, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I think that's giving it even a little bit too much. Probably, It's like the <laughs> Attack of the Killer Tomatoes back in the day. You know? <laughs> yes, what a great movie that was. <laughs> Cult classic. Well, that's what, uh, what Sharknado is. You know, I'm, I'm starting to see a trend here. And it's it's not by coincidence, and it's something that I really believe. There's no such thing as coincidence. It's just something that God's bringing to my attention. Um, last week, we had a guest, uh, Celebrity, and he had just released an awesome Christian track uh, with George Lynch from Dokken, who was playing the guitars on it, Simon Phillips, who was with Toto and Tears for Fears, and then he also had Tony Franklin, who worked with Kate Bush, The Firm, and, I mean, Jimmy Page. They all collaborated together on this Christian song, and then you've got... Uh, your collaborator as well. You've got um, Danny with you on this one. Why do you think these secular artists that you would never think of, you know, having anything to do with Christian music, why are they all of a sudden, you know, working on these Christian projects? Just your opinion and your observation. All right. Just an opinion. Um, those particular musicians are they're stellar players. They've been around for a long time. And you mentioned Simon Phillips, if I remember correctly. He also did the Sin After Sin album with uh, Judas Priest. I yes, think, he did. As well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, great players. So I think they've been around for a long time and they've pretty much seen and done it all. You know, so maybe like back in the day when they were doing uh, extensive touring and things. And again, this is just off the top of my head. Um, they had their share of of drugs perhaps in all the, the, the groupies and all that kind of stuff. And maybe they did some things that they're not real proud of. So as mm -hmm. they've gotten older, I think they realize that it's time to find God and to, uh, to get their lives together and not saying that they're, they're not together, but um, finding Christ is definitely something that I believe everybody needs to do. And, some people it's going to take them a certain amount of time or a longer time to find it. And as we get older and as we get closer to that time, um, I think that's where you really got to make your peace. And, and perhaps these guys are at a point now where they've, they've pretty much, like I said, they've done it all. And they're like, you know, something, we really need to do this for him. Yes. Which is what my uh, revelation was or epiphany or whatever you want to call it at that point in time too, is when God called me, he told me that it's time to do this as well, to change your life and to, to create music. Music is so important in people's lives. <laughs> you yes. know, I mean, if you think about it, you can hear a song and it'll take you back to maybe a good time or a bad time. Yeah. So music is so important in people's lives and what would we do without music? So it's so influential. So uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's a great thing that they're putting this together and um, I, I'm excited to hear more of what they play or, or more of what they create, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Uh, yeah. I wish the younger musicians, um, the ones that are all, you know, and I'll use the term hell bent right now on, yeah, it's about the occult and it's about Satan. I wish they would take a lesson from these older musicians who have been around the block who are coming to Christ right now. And even taking a lesson from Black Sabbath. I mean, they were the, the uh, what, what are they now? The great grandfathers of, of metal? You know? Quintessentials, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, that, that's where they're the ones that started this whole crazy thing. And, you know, their song Iron Man, as we talked about earlier, was about Jesus. It wasn't about the devil. Um, you know, Ever After was about Jesus. It was about getting back to the truth of Scripture is what Ever After was about. It wasn't about glorifying Satan or the devil. And you've got all these people running around. Yeah, I'm a metal musician or I'm a rock musician. We glorify Satan. It's like, that's not what it was about. You've kind of twisted the whole thing around. 
And I got that whole thing, of course, you know, the, oh, the cool. horns and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, just lost my train of thought. I had something to say about that. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, I'll tell you something really funny is that there was this um, one, I shouldn't say one, but on Facebook, I belong to a whole bunch of different Christian groups, for instance. And we got this really great review in this one magazine. And the magazine's um, logo is not exactly Christian. Right. So I did post that on there and I did post um, the logo on there as well. And it's funny because there's a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot, but there were a, a few people too that were like, why are you posting that? And we rebuke you, you know, kind of thing. And I was thinking, I, I believe it's Matthew 9, 15, where Jesus was being questioned as to why he has meals with the sinners and the tax collectors. And basically Jesus said, it's not the healthy that need a doctor and it's not the righteous that need to be saved. Yes. So, you know, I, I try to explain to these people that you're just seeing this in a whole, uh, you're not seeing it correctly. You know, it's basically, I am proud to be able to get into that market you know, mm -hmm. to be infiltrate. I look at it like I'm bringing light to the darkness. Yes. I move toward those things. So I love when we're getting played on stations that have like 666 in their logo and pentagrams and all that kind of stuff, because that's where I need to be. Yes. Because like Jesus said, it's not the righteous that need to be saved. Yes. Yeah. So if I could get my music to the people that need to hear it, I think that's a blessing, man. It is. It is. Yeah. Some people, they get a little too uh, Ned Flandersy with uh, with everything and get a little too uptight about different things. Um, you know, I feel very comfortable and at home at secular rec rock and metal concerts. And of course, I, I enjoy the music. Now, there have been sometimes it's like a hot acid bath and I'm like, OK, I'm just not totally down with this. But I like interacting with the people there and meeting them and talking to them. It's, it's an outreach. Um, <clears throat> there have been artists that I've had outreach time with at different concerts as well. And that's, you know, I really enjoy that. And I feel very I'm like, this is where I need to be. Yeah, this is where I need to be. Uh, and we are supposed to be that light in the darkness because here's here's the deal. 90% of people, this was a statistic I heard the other day, 90% of people are not going to go to church. They're not. And in scripture, Jesus doesn't say, hey, get them all into your church so you can, you know, so they can hear the gospel. He says, go ye into what? All of the world. All of it. And that's what you're doing is you're going in to those darker parts of the world where, and hey, not everybody's called to go there. You know, they're, they're not. And it terrifies some people with, with what you're doing. What we do terrifies some people. And I know that. And some people scratch their head. But that's fine. You weren't called to go there. You were called to go somewhere else. And we can't compare ourselves. And the last thing that we need to do is judge people based upon where God's called them to go with the gospel. And that's a major issue that we've got going on right now, because for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever believes on him will have everlasting life. And how are they going to hear the message of salvation? And Paul said this, how are they going to hear the good news unless God sends a preacher to them. And that's what you're doing. And Jeffrey, Jeffrey, thank you. I'm getting, I'm getting the spiritual high five here. <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> yes, Jeffrey, I'm with you, my friend. Yes. You know, what we do, what we do, it scares the ladies knitting club. I know that. And I get that. That's fine. And they've got their thing that they're doing and that's fine. We just need to mind our own business. Okay. And if we find somebody, they're going out and doing something that we wouldn't do. Man, more power to them, you know, more power to them and support them and pray for them, especially as these days, man, as you said at the beginning, it's getting dark out there. You know, it's a crazy world and people need to hear the gospel and we're seeing fruit of people. I mean, you know, 
great musicians that have been with all of these bands that used to be preached against for years are supporting, you know, works like yours. Who would have thunk it? It's Amen, just a exciting time. You know, it I really bet is. you, I bet you the witnesses that the cloud of witnesses that, that surround us, Elijah and John the Baptist and Moses are like, Oh man, I wish I could get in there right now. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's like, probably give me a guitar, man. I want to go down and rock. with the Oh band. yeah. What a, what a cool band that would be. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about, um, you know, getting, uh, people uptight about stuff. Uh, the name of your band, the word 66, it's very clever what you did with it. And I think I know where you're going with it. But again, when people see the number six, they automatically, ah, you know, it's a, it's a freak out time, but you know, really six is the number of man, but the word 66, what, what is the meaning behind the word 66 is your name as a band? It's actually really simple because uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but there's actually 66 books in the Bible. Yes. So we thought it'd be really cool to have 66 in the name and the Bible's the word. So we came up with the word 66 and I love the name, man. I think it's really cool. It's so clever. It's so clever. And I like that there are 66 books in the Bible because that's the number of man. And really the whole Bible was inspired by Holy Spirit for man. It's God's love letter to man it's his message to man and jeffrey he is totally down with your name as well the word 66 thanks but yeah I mean, people when they see that number six they all, all of a sudden start freaking out especially if they see you know multiple sixes but it's it's the number of man and you know what there is no you know every number you know in the gematria in hebrew and even in greek as well it's got a positive meaning and it's got a negative meaning as well. And that's a whole nother podcast we can do at another time. But um, so there's, there are 66 books in the Bible. And you're right. A lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. And like you said, when they hear the 6-6, six, six, they're expecting to hear, they're waiting for the other six to drop. Yep, they are. You know, Because that's what they're used to. You know, they're used to, you know, the number of the beast, you know, uh, Iron Maiden. <laughs> made that probably the most popular you know 666 so yeah and, and of course like i said and there's a lot of people too that think it's it, a lot of stations and a lot of like i said a lot of the other people on the harder side of rock or or the the hardcore side they they always think it's really cool to stick that extra six in there they do they do but what that does the cleverness of your name is it gets you into those streams where you need to be to share the gospel you know, right. Yeah. And, and, and Jeffrey says, uh, though for me, associate 66 with the U S highway. <laughs> and there was a, there was a horror movie too. I think it was, uh, I think it was route 66. I think it was called, was it or route six, six, six. Maybe it was, I think Lou diamond Phillips was in it. I think that's, uh, in the same category, Sharknado. <laughs> it might it be. definitely was. Yeah, not, not not the greatest of movies, no. <laughs> that that an attack of the killer tomatoes. <laughs> and killer clowns from out of space was one of my favorites oh, too. Oh, that yes, I've I've actually seen that one, and that was that was kind of <laughs> freaky. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those ones back in the nineties. Um, if you turned on HBO or Showtime, they always had that one on. And late at night. Yes, you just couldn't get away from it. Oh, <laughs> I gotta have nightmares now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks steve okay <laughs> what is what is the best way for our viewers and listeners to keep up with the word 66 and what you guys are up to probably our website so uh the word 66.com is where you can find out a lot of information uh, we don't post everything on there so i would say if you really want to keep up to date you know check us out on your facebook and your twitter and your instagram on some of those places, uh, we weren't able to get the word 6-6 six, six with the actual uh, numeric value. So we had to put S-I-X-T-Y-S-I-X. -S so on some of those places where the word 66 on there. So um, there we, we post everything like, you know, being on this show, for instance, you know, you'll definitely find it on those um, on those socials as well. Um we're very proud to say that we get featured on a ton of radio stations and a lot of other stuff going on. So 
um, we'll post that a lot of times, not so much on the website, but we will post that on your Facebooks and again, your Instagrams and your Twitters. Um, musically, you can find us everywhere. You know, we're on your, you know, your, your Spotify's and your, your Deezer's and your Pandora's and your Apple's and your Amazon, all those kind of places as well. Uh, we also have a ton of merch out there. If anybody um, is interested in such a thing, you know, we've got a ton of stuff out there, including T-shirts and um, coffee mugs and tumblers and posters and all that kind of fun stuff. Nice. Um, if you do check us out also on like YouTube. Um, on a lot of these places too, you can make comments. So it'd be really great if we get you guys to to leave some nice comments as well. We'd really appreciate that. Absolutely. And you know, a lot of people don't realize this. When you leave comments or hit that like button on YouTube for a video, it helps boost that video's ranking in that nasty thing that we know as the algorithm that just never really seems to work the way that it should for no. Those that need it to work, but you can yes. help by doing that. So go to the word 66 on YouTube, like their videos, subscribe to their channel. Um, oh, and Doyle says uh, he needs a he needs a cool shirt for sure. Thanks, Doyle. I appreciate you, my friend. Um, <laughs> if you go on the website, there's uh, you'll see a whole bunch of um, little boxes with things that have, like I said, the tumblers and the t-shirts and all those kind of things. If you click on that, it will take you to Christian t-shirts.com. I believe it is. And that's where a lot of our merch is. Um, it's the first. They're up in New York, that, aren't they? What's that? Christian t-shirts. They're up in like New York, New Jersey, aren't they? I'm not really, really sure to be honest with you. They were a sponsor of ours a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, I'm not really yeah. sure exactly where they're from. They might be. Okay. Um, but you can get, you know, the merch from like our first EP or the second EP. Um, we had a uh, this guy in Brazil um, create our album covers for us. And uh, I think they're really cool. So um, that's basically what's what's out there. Get your Word 66 merch. Support these guys. Um, as we said at the beginning of the show tonight, this is not our full-time jobs. <laughs> this is not Steve's full-time job. Um, a lot of times it's a labor of love and there's more money that goes into it than they get out of it. And that's really a, a heart towards the Lord to get the gospel out to people that need to hear it. And that's yes. to be commended and supported. Yeah, we are way behind the eight ball. <laughs> as far as uh, as cash goes but again it, it's not all about the money it's about spreading the word and i believe that this is our purpose in life yes that's why Amen. we were created yes we were created to glorify him that was the original intent and steve i want to thank you for your sacrifice to be a, a servant of the lord and using your gifts to glorify him. And thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, and again, about uh, the likes and the subscribes, go ahead and like us on uh, Raven's Heart on YouTube. Subscribe to us and please share this video because this is music that needs to get out. Uh, this is not what you're going to hear on your mega corporate radio stations in, in a lot of ways. Um, Jeffrey, thank you for joining us tonight. Yes, thank you for uh, thank you, Glenn and Steve. Thank you for joining us this evening. Share this, share this, get the word out about Word 66. And what we do at Lithos Cry and Raven's Heart is we are here to help promote and support artists such as Steve and his band, The Word 66, and to get the word out about, about what they're doing and have some iron sharpening iron during the evening and breaking, breaking the word and fellowshipping in the presence of the Lord. Steve, thank you again for joining us and to our viewers and our listeners. Until next Thursday night, we have Crimson Overtone, Overtone who's going to be joining us. Until then, peace out and rock on. Lithoscry.com. Thank you, Glenn. I really appreciate it, my friend.